Hi buddy, I hope you all are keeping well. I'm Geetika Kure and I'm the VP and General Manager of WSO2's Identity and Access Management business. I'm sure you've already listened to our awesome presentation so far, uh, heard Sanjeeva speak about uh, you know, WSO2 and WSO commitment into open source. Jonathan would have spoken about open source and its uh, values, uh, the proposition in, that it offers to any organization that's interested in adopting open source. And Asanka would have spoken about all the amazing technical aspects that uh, you know come and that, that we bring to the table as a platform. I want to take a moment to take us down the path of talking about identity and access management and how an open source technology adds value in that IAM space. Um, and, and to take a step back, you know, let's, let's talk about identity access management here. Here we are talking about, you know, in an in a organization that's digitally transforming itself, how identities are about securing your employees logging into enterprise applications. It's about your consumers logging into any consumer-focused applications out there. Uh, if you have any B2B customers or partners that need to access any of your uh, you know, SaaS platforms or applications, it's about securing that interaction. Uh, it could be securing your APIs, making sure the, they are being used and, and there's authorization uh, for those APIs, or it could be any sort of IoT enabled device that you want to secure. Uh, all of these come into play and, and it, it, IAM kind of deals with you know, securing that experience and moreover, uh, the world is also sort of sort of moving to a, to a point where it, you know the security and the uh, authentication that ex experience is becoming that much more important, especially when it's a custom IAM uh, uh, use case when it's consumers or B two B use uh, logging in right SIAM. Um, so all of these kind of becomes really really important, and with you know, AI coming to picture, uh, the world getting even more digitally enabled. You, I'm sure, you know, you realize how, how critical securing these user identities and identity data become. Right? We see so many breaches, you know, every moment there's a breach announced around the world. So having the security for your identity data becomes extremely important. Right? And, uh, and and that prominence is, is absolutely increasing and that's what we at, on the IAM front kind of really deal with. So I, I'm not sure which background you come from. Maybe you are interested in API management, integration, hopefully I didn't access management itself. Uh, I just want to kind of take us take a step back and kind of help you visual, visualize where you know, IAM sort of sits in that digital landscape of an organization. Right. Um, so I'm going to take you through this quick build uh, to kind of give that sort of visual experience on this. Uh, so as, as I sort of switch to this diagram, you know, it all starts with this systems of record. And uh, this could be your HR application, uh, any sort of financial applications that you may be using. Uh, it could be your ERP, a CRM, all of those applications. All of these become their systems of record and they come with their domain APIs or there could be some sort of domain services that sort of encapsulate uh, these systems of record. Right? And then, you know, as, as organizations require to, you know, or are going down this digital uh, journey, more often than not, they end up building experience APIs that sort of consume and help uh, the consumption of these domain APIs and domain services. Uh, this is where our awesome API management and integration technologies come into play. And from an identity access management perspective, our API security or API access management capabilities come in really important. Manage those, you know, APIs with OR tokens or 2.0 tokens to provide that sort of security that's required for these APIs. Right? Uh, that this is sort of where IAM come in, comes into the place, into into the picture at first. Right? And then we have these API ex experience APIs exposed to various parts of the organization uh, that, that ends up consuming these and depending on who the end user is, building out a whole bunch of digital experiences. At, you know, it could be your enterprise 
uh, application team that's building out AP, uh, applications, experiences for your employees. Here, we, we see B2E or, or workforce engine access management coming into play. Right? Um, and it could be an uh, your lines of business that's building out experiences for your consumers, right? It could be web apps, mobile apps, uh, and so on and so forth, right? Experience of our consumers. Here, one part of SIAM or Customer ID and Access Management comes in, which is maybe referred to as B2C uh, SIAM, right? Or if you're an organization that organization that's, you know, providing services and uh, experiences to another business, it could be your customer or a partner. That's where you know your B two B SIAM comes into picture, and 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 I just want to kind of use this moment to kind of explain you know that identity access management comes into play on top of these amazing APIs and the experience APIs that you're building out in your organization, and it could be touching various parts of your organization that you know owns these different applications that are being built. Right, and as the number of applications, the number of users across all these applications and APIs increase, the complexities and the importance of identity and access management, or I, that IAM layer, increases drastically. And and this is where organizations you know, sort of realize the importance. Many organizations realize the importance of having control over these identities and the identity data because that ends up being their digital assets, right? Any breach could result in, 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 in uh, the organization going through, uh, you know, the loss of reputation, loss of revenue, uh, and, and it could, you know, it could really take the organization back many, many steps. So that's where identity access management becomes highly critical, highly important. So this becomes a part where, you know, sort of open source helps organizations on many fronts in having what we call identity sovereignty, right? The control over their identities, right? So when you opt to use an open source technology, firstly, you have a lot of control where you deploy the product, right? Open source, you download it, you can deploy it on your own data centers, on cloud infrastructure. Essentially, you can deploy it anywhere. That is where the power of open source starts, right? And then it becomes the, uh, the, the control of the data, of that identity platform and the identity data you have complete control of, of how it's set up, how the security uh, mechanisms are set up. And, and in, in, when it comes to open source technology, especially from an IAM perspective, the product's extensibility, the ability to extend it and meet your re unique requirements becomes super important. And, and open source IAM is the absolute go-to uh, to be able to provide you that. And finally, it's about having access and control over the source code. Right. That is the true epitome of identity sovereignty. And, 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 it, and this applies to almost any industry. We have customers all across multiple industries that I talk about. And especially when it comes to government use cases, where, where we see you know, more and more you know, with competition across geographies or countries and their digital identity um, uh, initiatives, I love to have that control over these identities and we see open source becoming a, a huge factor and, and go to in, in that sort of organization. So having said that, you know, just coming back to WSO2 now, right? Uh, we first launched uh, Identity Server, which is our open source Apache 2.0 licensed uh, identity access management uh, offering. Uh, it was first launched back in 2007. Um, and, and probably around 2014 is when we started seeing uh, commercial adoption of the product because uh, we did a complete rewrite of the product at the time. And, and now we have so many customers around the world uh, from varied uh, uh, industries, varied scales. We have customers going up to having over 100 million identities managed, government with tens and millions of their citizen identities managed, uh, entire 
you know, large enterprises with all their employee identities manage, API access management across trillions of API calls around uh, on our every year, all secured and managed through our WS2 identity server. Um, and you know, and these could be in insurance, finance, education, so on and so forth, right? And something that we are very, really, really proud of, the fact that this open source product is powering and, en and enabling all these organizations around the world. Right? So identity server uh, from, a, from a product and its product strategy standpoint and in, in terms of its roadmap, uh, we just released identity server 7.0 uh, back uh, you know, early February, uh, and Identity Server 7, uh, I'm, I'm so proud, to, and we're actually really proud of it, because it absolutely is one of the most powerful versions of Identity Server released to date. Uh, because, you know, just a small pivot here is that WC2 has ourselves, we sort of pivoted to the cloud to have a sort of cloud offering. And even from the IAM perspective, we launched Ascardio, uh, you know, a few years ago. And when we go into the SaaS realm, we realize that the, the, the importance of user and developer experience becomes that much more important. The people, you know, developers need to be able to click, 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 move a lot faster and be a lot more agile in the implementation of IDN access management. So we did this, we were successful, and then we brought back all these learnings back to our open source offering identity server. So Identity Server 7 brings our awesome cloud UIs back into open source. Uh, and, and a lot of you know, pre-built uh, you know, flows, uh, and then there's this visual editor for the login experience. So, so developers can you know, build out that login experience, the login flow, and essentially visualize what that will look like on the fly, and it'll write code. There's some low code um, uh, capabilities built in there, so you can drag and drop what you need to build that flow. And in the back end, the code will be written awesome. And then uh, we had this B2B SIAM capabilities. At the moment, uh, you know, we have some amazing features that, that are available. It was only available in the cloud. And now we're excited to have it available on our open source Identity Server 7, our B2B CIM capabilities, a lot of rich uh, features available there. And then, uh, and I'm not sure if you're aware, but at one point WS2 had, uh, we really <laughs> are really supporting it now as well, our open banking capabilities. Uh, and we built a solution on top of Identity Server and API Manager, and we've now brought a lot of those capabilities back into Identity Server Seven as well, so support for FAPI, uh, so financial grade APIs, all these capabilities are available now. And one la other last feature is this um, support for native mobile applications, so that the login flow is a lot more seamless, and you do not need to call a web browser on that mobile app. So on the app itself, there's straightforward uh, authentication capabilities. So all of these awesome features are now available with INS Server Seven, and our commitment does not stop there. I'm uh, really excited for the future as well. Uh, in, uh, you know, as the year progresses, we'll have a new version released. And with this next version, uh, one of our goal is to even further enhance uh, Identity Server 7, make it that much more lightweight, that much more cloud native and performant, so that organizations can reduce on those infrastructure bills and be able to run Identity Server at tremendous scale uh, as, as they need. Uh, we'll also be uh, bringing back uh, or bringing in some API backed uh, so, or other AI backed uh, features to you know, really you know, enhance the developer experience and the security that end users get from the product that much more. Uh, and finally, um, we want to make Identity Server run even better and, and be much more extensible to any organization that's running any sort of B2B SaaS application and so on and so forth. So, so that API extens extensibility features will also be brought back into Identity Server uh, in, in, the, in the future releases in 2024. Uh, so in summary, um, IAM is super important for any organization depending irrespective of its scale. 
Uh, it could be managing any type of users or APIs or devices. Uh, and given the importance of that identity and identity data, we see so many organizations around the world wanting to sort of manage those identities and have a lot of control, right? And, and another trend we are seeing is cloud repatriations, right? Organization getting out of cloud and managing their technology on-prem. And, and open source absolutely becomes the answer to any organization that's doing that as well. So, you know, open source is, is really powering uh, organizations, especially, especially from an IAM perspective. And what better product for them to use than our open source, 100% open source, Apache 2.0 licensed identity server. And we are continuing to commit to open source as an organization and are excited for the future. I hope if you haven't, please go download WS2 Identity Server 7 from our website, try it out, give it a spin, and let us know how you like it. Because we love feedback, we love uh, you know our community committing back to the product, and uh, yeah, we'd love to work with you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed yourself uh, and my presentation today. Uh, enjoy, have fun, bye bye. Oh, 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 oh,